Hello and welcome to the new Power BI tutorial video and in this video I will be showing you Power BI DEX date calculation function to get historical or future values. So in this uh, like I said as per the title we will go back in history and fetch the value or we can even go back or uh, go actually forward into the future and uh, get the values. Well, that's what we will going to look at. So this will going to be very important for you if you are an aspiring data scientist or data analyst or anyone because comparison of historical values and in certain cases, cases even the future values is important. And uh, if you are using Power BI to explain this or, or to create a view or to create a proof of concept, then in this, uh, this video can be useful for you. And uh, before I move ahead, uh, if you have landed very first time on my channel, then just a quick information that this is a live Google spreadsheet, which is present in the description. So the link is present in the description so that you can search any of my previously loaded videos. And uh, using the column B, you can click on the link and jump directly to the video so that you can easily access anything. And since it is a live Google sheet, all of my future videos all will also be updated over here. So make sure you bookmark this. All right, with that, let's go to the scenario. So we want to go back uh, in history or move forward into the future. So what I mean by that is, let's say for example, uh, this is the sales values for each day. As you can see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is missing if you see, nine, 10, 11, then 12 is missing and so on and so forth. That means on 12th of Jan, there is no order or in 8th of Jan, no order. But what I want to do is if I am, let's say, standing over here on 4th Jan, then I want to see the data or the sales value of 16, uh, sorry, day value of uh, 3, which is $16.4. So that means wherever I am standing, like here, I want to go one day back and get the value. Well, if this is what the scenario you want to solve, then you may need to use the function which I'm going to explain you. All right. And uh, before I do that, and uh, the uh, before I actually show you the calculation, one thing you need to make sure that in your data model over here, you know, we have this order table, people table, returns, and so on, and some other table. So what you need is basically a table which will going to have the continuous dates. What I mean by continuous date is like three, four, five, six, seven, and then nothing is for eight, right? Or it may be a scenario like you have two dates, let's say uh, over here, if we have a different level of granularity, then two different dates are present. So in that case, what you need to have is the continuous state so that all of dates are appearing. And for that, what I will going to do is click on the modeling tab and click on new table. That way we were going to create, first of all, a calendar table. And this calendar table will be based on order date and we will say calendar and uh, that will be min based on the minimum value of order date existing order date that we have and max order date so what's actually going over here is that this is a table which is here in the orders table in some of the cases the continuation of the date is missing like 7 to 8 or 16 to 17 here in this case or 11 to 12 i am creating a continuous table where this is just one stand one single table which is having the continuous date based on these dates so minimum date is third and maximum date is whatever the maximum date will be and that way the calculation of the function which i'm going to tell you will work otherwise you will face problem and i will show you that how you are going to face the problem all right, so once I do that, so here is this value. Here is my order date. If I just bring it over here and just down there, I will just put it on order date over here. That way, a relationship is established. Now I'm coming back here. So if you see, for example, in this table, uh, where, have we, where have this gone? Okay. So this has changed as soon as I have made these changes, if you see, because that's the page number nine, I was there. So now if I need to use the table, I will going to use the order dates. If I select this, remove, or probably let's say add this order date, 
So now you will see that this order date, the new date that we have created is working. This one, this new date is working. So I can remove my old date because this is a continuous date which uh, we want to have. However, if you observe that even in this case, we are not having 7 to 8. And I will show you in a minute that how it can, how it will show once we apply our actual function that will going to take the one day back value. That means for 4th of Jan, it will show the value of 16.4. As soon as we add that, we will find that we have the continuous state in the proper manner. Okay, so for that, what I'm going to do is click on the new measure. As soon as I click on the new measure, I will say last day sale. And we can have last day sale, last month or seven days back sale or 15 days back sale, whatever we want, we can actually have that. And I will use the calculate function and I will say sum of sales or order sales. And here we were going to write the date add function. Within that, we will write order underscore date, this particular date. And then we were going to write minus one for one day back. If I specify day, it will be one day back. If I specify month, it will be one month back. If I specify quarter, it will be one quarter back. And if I specify year, it will be one year back. So you got the idea. All right. There you go. Last day sale. Let me bring it over here. And I just bring this also here. So now you see 16.4 is here, 288.1 is here, 19 is here. And now magically you have the Gen 8 appearing because for the earlier values, there was nothing for Gen 8. That's why it was not coming. But as soon as we have this value, the output is coming. Now, if you observe this function, last day sale is based on the order date date the one table we created here but not actually based on the order date over here right which i was originally showing you at the table so what i meant by that because you will run into this issue and for hours you will be scratching your head why the numbers are not coming so let me show you here by creating one table and taking the order date now the order date that I'm taking is actually uh, a simple order date. It is not like a date hierarchy. The reason for this is the hierarchy is basically moved, has moved over here, right? So after we have made this particular table, the order table, the order table and the values are present here. If we would have not done that, for example, let me go here and let me right click and click on delete. Are you sure you want to delete this relationship? Yes. So let's click OK. Let's say if we have not done that, right? So over here we have this table and now the hierarchy will be back. So if I come here and I will say the date hierarchy, then you will see that all of these values are actually similar to this, right? Whatever we are showing it over here. So let me now bring the sales over here. So now we have the sales for us or for these values. After we have added the sales, I will go ahead and add the last day sale over here. And last day sale is actually giving the exact same value what it, you are having it over here. The reason for this is if I click on this, what you are getting is the order date date, right? So this order date date needs to be now this order date, not this one, right? So because we have removed the relationship. So order date is here. And if I click OK, you will see the values are not appearing. Even though in the total you are getting something, but the values are not displaying over here. And that's a problem because of the context of the way tax formula works in a context that you are providing and to create a context i had to create this table which basically takes the continuous dates and create a separate but consistent calendar table for us which has all the continuous state so that is the reason i wanted to show you 
as to why this is important and it is important that we establish this relationship to get the output correctly otherwise you will be scratching your head for um, for all of this and the way i'm doing the kind of configuration that's the same way you need to do the configuration so make sure you you basically have perfect or the way i'm calculating is the same way otherwise you will not going to get the output and as you can see now we have set the context right and uh, with the proper table structure we have the values so i know slightly complex but you can get last one day or if i want to get two laps maybe five days back value you can even get the five days back value like one two three four five that is why you are showing it over here right or you want to go to month just change it to month it will show you the five month back value so that's what i wanted to show you i hope you have learned something new which will be very very useful trust me i have done on hundreds of report this is something you will going to encounter every single time once you once you work on the report with that thank you so much for watching and i'll meet you in the next video